Welcome to Community Cocktails with Kimberly, hosted by Kimberly Woodard, a realtor for nearly 20 years with Ebby Halliday Realtors. Join her every first and third Wednesday of the month as she meets with the top community influencers to help you get to know the area you want to call home. Don't just love your home, love your community. And now, your host, Kimberly Woodard. Welcome viewers to this episode of Community Cocktails with Kimberly. I'm so excited about this episode and I know you guys are going to be thrilled and so excited to hear and learn so much from this expert. And so of course, it being Community Cocktails with Kimberly, we've got to talk about wine, right? Um, so I have author of Wine Label Shopping, um, Sydney Eliason here. Hi, Sydney. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Oh, my pleasure. So let's talk um, about wine and let's talk about how did you get into writing this book? Yeah, that's that's a great question. Um, so uh, a little bit about me. Uh, I used to be in advertising and film, actually. Uh, so I've always loved writing. Yes. Uh, but uh, when I switched over to the culinary side a few years ago, uh, I fell in love with wine uh, at the Culinary Institute of America. They have you take a pretty in-depth class oh. and uh, just fell in love with it and kept taking some certifications and other exams from there. And uh, then as I started my business, The Psalm Chef, uh, I was doing a lot of wine classes and I was having a lot of similar questions from clients of, you know, I'm going into a wine store and I just buy the same thing over and over again right. or you know, the one time that I tried something new, it was terrible and it was not what I was expecting. And so what do you do about that? And I thought, those are great questions. And there are actually some answers to those. Okay. And so that is really the foundation of this book. It is um, A, in honor of all of the people who have taken classes from me and asked those questions, as well as um, future people, too, that take classes with me. And this is something that I point to as a resource for them, too. So it's really fun. Um, it just constantly is evolving and, and all of that. Yes. I mean, it's a great book um, and such a nice resource uh, for people like myself that, you know, I always go and navigate to the same old, same old, you know, Chardonnay or Pinot Noir. Don't deviate when I go to a restaurant, the same thing. So let's talk about, you know, when we're going into, because this wine places can be very intimidating to a lot of, um, you know, a lot of us out there, you know, we go in and, you know, we just see these rows of wines. And now even the grocery stores have these big wine departments and there's just so many, um, you know, what, like, what can you ease our um, intimidation? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so, uh, I try to make the book accessible by breaking it down into different geographic regions and locations because America is pretty straightforward uh, for the most part. We label our wines by grape varietal. So we have, like you said, Chardonnay or Pinot Noir, Cabernet Sauvignon. Those are grape varietals. Whereas over in Europe, they uh, label things quite differently. So right. like a Rioja, for example, we know it's a red wine for the most part. They do have white Riojas. Uh, but what is what is that? What makes that up? And uh, it's Tempranillo, um, but does it have oak on it? Is it going to be big and bold or is it going to be lighter? How do you know? And so the book goes into those regions and talks about that. Um, so, uh, climate is huge, um, and all of that, but to stay at a more surface level too, for just when you're shopping, I encourage people to go back in their memories to think about a wine map or sorry, a map, like an Atlas from when yes. they were in elementary school, right? Uh, with the equator in the middle and you, you know, you've got the whole world laid out and the closer to the equator you are, the riper, the more fruity, the jammier, the fuller bodied your wines are going to be, the higher alcohol they're going to be. Okay. Um, there are exceptions, of course, and the book talks about those as well, like altitude or elevation are going to yield cooler climates. Um, uh, Mendoza or um, Chile are great examples of that. Argentina has great examples of mountain ranges. Um, 
But then the cooler you are, so think about New York or think about Chablis, France, or other areas, um, Germany, for example, very, very cold. Those are going to be light body. Those are going to be crisp, refreshing, um, definitely higher acidity, um, and they're going to have those characteristics. So right off the bat, when you go into a wine store, it's organized by geography. So it's organized by region. So you can kind of estimate, okay, I want to go to France or like, I'm looking for something crisper. I'm going to try and go to a cooler climate on that mental atlas that I have in my head. Very interesting. I just learned something new. (laughs) So good, good. Yes. No, well, I would, but I mean, I guess, you know, it makes sense. You know, Germany, you know, Riesling, you know, it's very Mm -hmm. sweet. Um, you know, they're known for that. Um, and then, you know, but just to not even think about the equator and, you know, how that would, you know, impact and the different, you know, parts of the wines and the flavors and more body and more alcohol. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So watch that. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah, um, that but, can, well, and that's why too, you get these bold wines from California often. Right. Um, especially if you're on like a valley floor. And again, the book will talk about the difference between a valley floor and a hillside, um, both in terms of price as well as the wine that you're getting. And um, valley floors are very fertile. They're usually much warmer and vines can overproduce, whereas a hillside is going to be cooler. There's more drainage because the water can slowly fall off the slope. Uh, and rather than just soaking it. And so the vines struggle a little bit more. And so you're maintaining more acidity, you're maintaining more complexity. And um, Burgundy is a great example of of that. You've got your premier uh, vineyards are in the middle of that hillside. And then you've got the... um, I don't want to say lesser vineyards, but le- lower quality vineyards, we right. should say, um, are going to be at the base of the hillside or the very, very top where it's super windy and it's actually the thinnest layer of limestone soil up there. And, um, you know, again, they're not going to be the valley floors either. So um, that's how they differentiate a lot of times. That's, those aren't the only things, but um, those are some things. And that also can yield to those different price points as well as those different quality levels. Gotcha. Gotcha. Very interesting. Another, another fact I just learned. I'm loving all these new yeah. facts and I know my viewers are too. Okay. <laughs> so, so we've gone in the store, we've decided, um, say, you know, I have a um, friend and she loves more of a Sauvignon Blanc, a New Zealand. Let's talk about, you know, the New Zealand. Why, you know, why is that, you know, a different, what's the difference between that New Zealand region versus, you know, another region. So absolutely. That's a great question. Uh, and actually I do a tasting, um, it's called a, a lateral tasting. And oh. so, uh, we'll go over different varietals all across the world. So like a New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc, and we could compare that with a Sancerre, which is hundred percent Sauvignon Blanc. And that's from France. And that'll taste completely different than oh. a Fumé Blanc or a Sauvignon Blanc from California. And the reason for that is going to be hugely climate. Um, Of course, wine growing practices are different. Um, Vintners are going to be doing different things. But climate and uh, just what's going on in the vineyard impacts the grapes so much and uh, just on such a cool level. And so in in, uh, New Zealand, you get what I love to call fruit salad in a glass. You get all of these bright, it's like kiwi and grapefruit and orange and uh, lemon and lime. And there's just so much going on. It is so aromatic. And part of that is the soil that they have there too. Um, Also the climate in New Zealand, and um, it's, it can be pretty cold there, depending on where you're at. But for the most part, you've got all of these cooling ocean breezes um, and uh, they get great sunlight, but it, there's just a lot of cool air there. And so the wines maintain this refresh, refreshing like zestiness and vibrancy. And uh, if you were to compare that to Sancerre, let's say, uh, in France, that is in the northern um, 
part of France uh, in the Loire Valley, but there uh, the, so the soils are much different and the grape varietal is not quite so uh, fruity. It's got a little bit more of an herbal note to it okay. and it's more grassy. Uh, so it still has those bright citrus notes, but it's not going to be as in your face and it's going to okay. be much more mineral, uh, which when I say mineral, I like to um, compare it to like chalky is a great way to explain that. Okay. Um, and um, again, sometimes too, when you get a really mineral Chardonnay, I liken it back to elementary school. I know I've, this is the second one I've used, example I've used, but with like the chalkboard erasers right. and when you kind of bang them together and just that smell of chalk. Um, gotcha. uh, and yes, yeah, so I've gotten that with, with Sauvignon Blanc there too. Um, and Sauvignon Blanc from California, alternatively, is from a, usually a much warmer climate, um, even if it's from a cooler area of California. Um, also, sometimes it can be from a warmer area of, of California, and they'll add a bunch of oak to it. And um, that'll just be that style. Fumé Blanc typically will have oak. Sauvignon Blanc from California may or may not, just depending okay. on their producer. Um, but that will be much riper. And again, because it's a warmer climate. So that Sauvignon Blanc is going to be typically fuller bodied. Um, those fruits, maybe you'll be getting more like tangerine notes or more pineapple okay. than so much like grapefruit, uh, if that makes sense. Yeah. No, that does. So that's why the New Zealand's more fruitier, mm -hmm. um, definitely, you know, wonderful in the summertime, which we're hopefully yes. going to get to very soon. Yes. Um, yeah. And, um, you know, it's so refreshing um, that New Zealand, so I mean, whereas maybe your California with that oak deep, you know, kind mm -hmm. of almost leans to some of the Chardonnays, you know, that have that oakiness to them. Absolutely. It can. Yeah. Certain producers really like to emphasize that and, and blow that up for sure. Yeah, definitely. Well, I just learned again, another great point. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just learning so much today and I'm you know, so intrigued because of course, you know, I love, I love to partake in a glass of wine, but I love to know, you know, the difference and that's, what's, you know, so nice and, you know, getting outside of our comfort zone box, you know, um, what is something, you know, nice, you know, neat to, um, drink. So I guess what, if I went in to the store today and I am going to do some seafood, um, because this is, I'm in Lent. And so we eat a lot of seafood <laughs> at yeah. that time for, in our house. Um, so I want something great. What would you recommend? I'm going to do, let's say a white, Oh, just a white fish. Um, you know, I'll probably do like a cod or a sole. So that's the okay, easiest thing great. to get. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Well, yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. And I love that you said cod or sole instead of halibut or sea bit. Right. Like some people will go for those. Um, so cod or sole, it's a uh, great fish, uh, yeah. but it is simpler. It's um, just got this like very flaky, light flavor. And um, so I would suggest... A lighter wine, absolutely. Again, depending on what kind of sauce you're going to put with it, that'll right. also change some things. But uh, if you're going with a simple, maybe like a tomato sauce or even like a lemon caper sauce or something like that, um, one of my favorite wines to pair with white fish is uh, Muscadet Sevre Aimant. Uh, it's a very simple wine. It's very inexpensive, actually. Okay. I think it's very underrated, uh, but it is exceptional. And oh. you can find that in the Paye Nante region, uh, also the Loire Valley. So it'll be in the Loire section. That's L-O-I-R-E okay. section of your wine store in France. And... Um, and it's just a really simple, simple, light wine. And if you can get it with Sir Lee on the bottle, which is S-U-R space L-I-E, uh, that is that means that it's been aged on the leaves. Uh, and so it'll have a little bit more body to it, okay. but it's still going to be a very, very light wine, um, similar to like a simple Pinot Grigio. Uh, oh. is what I would compare that to. Um, yes. And in actually in uh, Severo Mont, where this wine is from, they will often serve little shooters of this wine with oysters instead of a lemon wedge. Oh, um, wow. 
that's just kind of like their fun way of bringing in the acidity and, and the brightness of it. And yeah, so I would, I would definitely encourage you to try that. It's new, okay. something fun. Yeah. Uh, most people have not had it before, but wine stores do have it. Oh, very interesting. And then um, the little thing about the oysters, I do have some friends that like oysters, so we'll have to try that. There you the go. Yes. I don't know. I've never made oysters before, but, um, but there you go. Um, yeah. they love having it. So they've never thought about having those little shooters instead of the lemon, but hey, I, I'm willing to try it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, something different. Absolutely, Definitely. something different. So now, so since I've talked to um, um, on the fish, you know, I probably have a, I know I have a lot of meat lovers out there. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. and we're getting into that, we're getting into that spring, summer, we're doing more barbecuing outside, uh, yeah. more cooking on the grill. So with that, you know, people are, you know, they're cooking their steaks out there and um, it's a nice, you know, spring day. Um, what, you know, recommend, what would you serve with, you know, and think, you know, again, outside barbecuing some steaks, you know, yeah. having a nice dinner. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Um, especially if your steaks are, it's more like a ribeye type of cut yes. or um, something that's a little heavier, or maybe you even do have that barbecue sauce. Like you're going full on ribs, like you've got something heavier. Um, I would love to recommend a Priorat to you, which is a red wine from Spain. Oh. And um, these are big wines. Um, you typically have to spend a little bit more. I would suggest you try and stay in like 25 to 30. Uh, if you're willing to spend a little bit more on it, um, go for it. Uh, you will not be disappointed. But um, these wines are just incredible. And they're, it is so hard to grow grapes in Priorat. Uh, that um, their yields are incredibly low, which means that the grapes are just so concentrated. And so if you are someone that likes those big, bold reds and right. like the big, powerful cabs and whatnot, I think you would really enjoy a Priorat. Very good. So for those of you that are going to be, you know, getting all your barbecue soon and cooking those steaks, go to the wine store and pick up a bottle um, and you have a nice, a nice combination dinner. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, well, love, love those. And then let's um, also talk about, you know, sometimes some people do like that dessert wine, you know, after mm -hmm. dinner drink. And sometimes, it, you know, some of those are really, really sweet. Um, but, you know, some of them can be a little bit in between. I know I'll order that's you know my problem is I'll order one maybe because I want you know something different and I want kind of dessert and that's my dessert, um, but it's just way too sweet and it, I mean I'm like uh take it back. <laughs> sure, sure. So what would you uh, you know some recommendations? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so if you are looking for a full on dessert wine maybe where it is your dessert. Yeah. Uh, I love port. I think port is okay. just amazing. Um, it's such a fun beverage. And I have been to Portugal and um, the Dorado Valley and um, they just take so much pride in it. So getting to see that firsthand is amazing. Um, but that even just with like a little bit of dark chocolate or something, that's all you need. Like yes. it's, that is, it is sweet. Um, if you're looking for something on the lighter side though, but still want something a little sweet, uh, I would suggest you try and find some high quality, like German Rieslings even, okay. um, now, Germany does have Rieslings that are dry and they are amazing. Um, and when I say dry, I mean no residual sugar. Um, there's not sweetness um, in them. Um, but they have some off dry or semi sweet wines. They've got this whole scale. And actually, the book talks about this too. Okay. Um, and um, it talks about just the different levels. It's called the Pratikatsvein. And um, they just have different sweetness levels over in Germany. And so um, that I would recommend you check out the book, uh, especially because just rambling off German words is not going to be memorable. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, yes. So it talks about that too. And just like what to look for on a German wine label when you are looking for that. 
Um, and again, you know, I think Germany can get a bad rep uh, sometimes with just the lesser, lower quality, inexpensive German right. Rieslings. But there are some amazing ones out there. So I highly encourage you to keep an open mind. Um, and again, if you can say in that $25, $30 price range, you could find a really stellar one. Oh, very nice. Yeah, we always think, you know, we think of Germany, you know, kind of think about beer and, you know, don't really. Right. Think, and, you know, and of course, Riesling comes into mind first. Um, but, you know, that's about it. So, um, yeah. but no, I will have to go and, you know, I've got a lot of shopping to do. <laughs> Yes, good. I'm like, ready. Good. I'm like, here I go with my cart and I'm spending, you know, because I, you know, it is fun to, you know, get some new different things than always going to your same old, same old, you know, I would, you know, I would say it like my old reliable bottle of wine that I buy, you know, each time um, and bring something and introduce something different, especially when, you know, this is that time where, you know, we are start starting to see people um, getting out, um, having dinners, you know, because, you know, springtime, they're cooking out and it comes into pool season. People are coming over more than they did maybe, you know, after the holidays. We kind of, I think after the holidays, everyone kind of hibernates for about two months and says, I don't want to see anyone. <laughs> Yeah, and, and absolutely. some of us are still, you know, maybe still taking down um, holiday decorations. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> We're just yep. getting back in the swing. So now it's time to bring them. I and mean, you can go and get a nice bottle of, you know, wine that's different and you can be at the talk of the party. <laughs> mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So what is your favorite? Let's, I'm going to put you on the spot. What is your favorite, uh, maybe your favorite to, you know, I love bringing this. It always gets um, a lot of talk about why. Ooh, that's or a you great can say a genre or, you know, it doesn't have to be, you know, maybe a couple, maybe it's a couple different um, ones. That's a great question. Um, if I am going somewhere where I don't really know the like crowd and right. like what they'll like, um, I will often bring really my go-to is 511 Chardonnay, which is a very small, it's a husband and wife team okay. um, there or Meadowcroft. Meadowcroft is more commercially available. I know you can order their wines online, right. um, but they've got a great Sauvignon Blanc. They have a fabulous rosé, uh, which is made from Malbec actually. Okay. Um, and they are super sustainable and everything. So people love that. Um, so I, I'll say Malbec cause that's, that's the great, um, it's, it's much more available commercially and you can, you you can find it much more easily. Very nice. Well, now we have what we should bring. We've got a tip of something that we can bring to that party that we aren't really sure about the different right. crowd, but maybe enjoyable um, for everyone. We've got something to cook with our fish something to pair with our steaks and our barbecues and a lot of knowledge here. Um, so when you're going to the, your favorite wine store, um, you are not like, you know, just overwhelmed. You can actually go and explore. So yes, yeah. you know, Cindy, um, I guess um, for the viewers, if they want to get a copy of this book, um, how can they get a copy? Uh, you could go on Amazon and uh, just get it directly from there. So you could either look up Wine Label Shopping, you could look up my name, Sydney Eliason, uh, or uh, I also have links to it to it uh, from my website if okay. you're curious about what I do. Um, so that's thesomchef.com. Perfect. And we'll have all that information on my um, podcast. So you can just easily click. We'll have Sydney's information. We'll have a link to the her Amazon um, link for ordering your copy of this book. Um, I know you'll want a copy after hearing this. And thank you so much, Sydney. Cheers to you and uh, happy wine shopping to everyone. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. If you'd like to contact Kimberly with your real estate needs, you can reach her at KimberlyWoodard.ebby.com. We hope you enjoyed our guest this week. And remember, don't just love your home, love your community.